Hiya, this is Chris Nixon in Leeds, England. I'm the author of the Simon Westow, Tom Harper and Richard Nottingham series, all set in mm, Leeds, England. Where else? I'm listening to the Dark and Stormy Book Club podcast. And so are you. So sit back, have fun and enjoy. Hello and welcome to episode 189 of Dark and Stormy Book Club. Well, it's October. What are we reading? We have three books for you to think about on this episode. Enjoy. I'm Ann Dart. I'm Tracy Stormy. And I'm Kathy Knight. And together we are It Was a Dark and Stormy Book Club. A podcast for mystery lovers. Welcome. Welcome. If you enjoy our show, please consider contributing to the Dark and Stormy Patreon. By becoming a patron, you will help us create better and quality content. There are also benefits to becoming a patron, such as exclusive content and Dark and Stormy merchandise. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash darkandstormybc. Check our website for the link. We appreciate any and all contributions. Thank you. Hello. Are you in a spooky mood? Because it's almost Halloween. My book's not spooky. Oh, it's not? Well, two spookies and one weird. (laughs) Different. We'll say different. Okay. My first book is called Seven Year Witch by Angela M. Sanders. It's book two in her Witch Way library series. And it is by Kensington Books and came out on August 24th. We thank our friends at Kensington for sending us this book. Josie Way, who is settling in at Wilfrid, Oregon, as the new librarian, has just discovered that she's a witch. First of all, I read the first book in this series about six months ago. And it was called Bait and Witch. Okay, I remember you talking about that. And I really liked it. So I was excited when we got the second book in the series. Josie, she's developing her witchcraft skills. Her special talent is all focused around books. Books talk to her. They whisper to her. In the other book, she was beginning to fall in love with Sam, who was her neighbor. And at the very end of the story, he tells her, well, um, I have to go away for a while. My wife needs something. And she goes, uh, wife? Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. That's never good. No. So she's trying to rebuild her life. She's a little disappointed that he was an FBI agent. He's a descendant of the founder of the town. All of a sudden, she notices that Sam is back. Okay. But Sam has some company. Sam has a little baby that he's carrying around. Hmm. Well, his little baby is very sweet. Wherever Sam goes, he's got a baby. All of a sudden, Fiona shows up. Fiona is the wife. They're really an odd couple. I don't think it comes as any shock when Fiona disappears. Sam is the main suspect, of course, because he was in the process of getting a divorce from his wife. In the middle of all this, there's the new community center, which was being planned for the town. The architect for that project, he disappears. I mean, people are disappearing left and right in this story. It's a good mystery. Who done it? What happened to Fiona? What happened to the architect? And what's going on in this crazy little town? It's very well written. Is it any kind of supernatural? No. Josie's powers are all linked to books. Say you went into the library and you said, 
I'm really having a hard time. My mother's sick. The books would whisper to Josie and tell oh, her nice. she ought to read this. Hmm. And Josie would tell the person what Kind of like the book therapy. Yeah, a little bit. The books also help in the solving of the mystery. But you have to read it to find out what's going on. It's very well done. It's not perfect, but it does keep you entertained through the whole book. There's that small town atmosphere, all the quirky characters that live in the town. Everybody knows everybody else's business, and everybody <laughs> knows where the bodies are buried, except when people disappear, nobody knows. It's very well written. Angela did a very good job. I hope it continues, because I would definitely read another one. It sounds so, like it might. You get attached to the characters, and you look forward to seeing them again. If you want to look up Angela and her books, she is at AngelaMSanders.com. Another winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yep. Okay, now we're going to go walk on the strange side. I don't know if our listeners are familiar with Lemony Snicket. So there's a couple different ways you could have become acquainted with him. You could have been a child around 20 years ago when the series of unfortunate events came out, and you could have read them like my son Joe did. He devoured them. Or you could have been a parent who read them to your children. I was a grandparent and read them by myself. <laughs> yeah, and there, there's always that too. But then there's also the show on Netflix that was out a few years ago that I absolutely love. Yes. And you know, there's a movie also. There's your connection to Lemony Snicket. I think it's pretty clever that Lemony has written another book and he's grabbing the attention of either you as a child, you as an adult. If you're looking for that style of book, you will not be disappointed. There's a certain cadence to a Lemony Snicket book. Yes, there is. And I'll give you an example. I was reading through the reviews, and I thought it was very clever that somebody wrote, Thanks to the publisher for providing the ARC, an acronym which means Electronic Advanced Reader Copy, in exchange for an honest review. That's a Lemony Snicket book. They love to explain what something is. Let me tell you a little bit about this book. That is a <laughs> a series of papers it's held together, together. <laughs> and they tell a story. Yeah. This true story, as true as Lemony Snicket himself, begins with a puzzling note under his door. You had poison for breakfast. Ooh. Following a winding trail of clues to solve the murder of his own demise. Snicket takes us on a thought-provoking tour of his predilections. <laughs> The proper way to prepare an egg, a perplexing idea called tinstum, and I'm probably butchering that, the sublime pleasure of swimming in open water. And Wait a minute. Let me get this straight, because I haven't read this book uh -huh. yet. He had poison for breakfast, so he's going to die. Well, wait a minute. If you listened to my description, it says he was slipped a note. He was told he was poisoned for breakfast. Oh, so he doesn't really know. He's going through what he had for breakfast. He had tea with honey. Well, that wouldn't be poison. I think it was toast and a perfectly prepared egg. Oops. He goes on this mission to try to find out how this could have happened, how he was poisoned for breakfast. He goes in and interviews the woman he buys honey from. She tells him, you're missing the biggest part of your breakfast. And he's like, what? Water in your tea. Then he's trying to figure out the water, so he goes to the beach. He said, even though that's not where the water came from in my tea, he just felt like he needed to connect with the water. This book is more of a peek inside a bibliophile's mind. It's very descriptive. It's almost like a poem. And like I said, if you're a fan of the Lemony Snippet books or series, you will very much enjoy this. It's not very long. No, it came in at 158 pages. 
you could sit and read it in a sitting. This would be a great one to read on a train. It's not really a mystery for you to solve. I'm going to put it to you that way. I will. He'll spell it all out for you, as only Lemony can. There's diagrams in here. This book came out August 31st by Norton and Company. So if you'd like to learn more about Lemony, or as he prefers to call, even as a child, Mr. Snicket. Oh, Mr. Snake. Yes, even no. as a child, that was his preferred name. You can go to LemonySnicket.com. I will have to check this out. You could read it in like a half an hour. All right. My third book is called Be My Ghost. Be My Ghost? Oh, yes. I like the play on words. It is number one in the Haunted Haven Mystery Series by Carol J. Perry. We did Carol's other yes. series not too long ago. And Which was very much enjoyed. enjoyed this one, too. And it was also by Kensington Books. Thank you, ladies. It came out September 26th. Well, Maureen Doherty is a young lady, and she is a buyer for a department store okay. up in New England. The store is going to close. It's going the way of all the department stores the this day. Mortars. The brick and mortars are gone, so they really don't need her. Just before Halloween, the department store declares bankruptcy. She has a dog who flunked out of... <laughs> Seeing Eye Dog School. Aww. She loves him. His name is Finn. Her boss, who really is very fond of her, gives her an envelope. And he says, this should help you out till you get settled. She was in Boston, and she can't afford the rent. And oh, was Boston's very Boston's expensive, expensive to live. <laughs> so she's really in a funk. But then she gets a letter in the mail. And it's from a law firm. And it says she needs to come to the town of Haven, Florida. She has an inheritance due. Ooh. She doesn't know anybody in Keep Haven. Keep waiting for that to happen. I to know, me. me too. She goes, well, Finn, it's you and me, puppy. Let's go check it out. We've got our car. We can drive. So she does. Well, when she gets there... She discovers that there's a hotel or an inn. It has been there for many years. And the woman who owned it passed away, and she left her inn to Maureen. Why? Well, okay. that's part of the mystery, because Maureen never met her. She does remember, as a very young child, spending a week at that hotel. But that's it. There's no family connection. She gets the hotel. It has its own cast of characters. There's the people that work for the hotel also live in the hotel. There are some rocking chairs on the porches. So a quaint little so place. So they sit out there and make comments on people passing and gossip. And kind of like we do. <laughs> Never. <laughs> So she said, okay, I'm going to start over. Run this hotel. Run this hotel. Even though she doesn't know how. She knows nothing about running a hotel. The first day she's there, guess what she finds on her porch? Uh-oh, a ghost. No, dead body. Dead body. I should have guessed. Yeah, I should have. One of the guests in the hotel keels over. Of course, the sheriff in town. You can picture the sheriff from Smokey and the Bandit. Yeah. yeah. Big belly. Buford T. Yeah, Buford T. Whatever. <laughs> he thinks she had something to do with it. Well, she's only been in town one day. Well, there's so, why she's guilty. That's right. <laughs> Apparently, the hotel is haunted. The guy that dropped dead was a ghost hunter. She doesn't believe in ghosts, but as she stays in the hotel longer and longer, she's going to meet some of these ghosts. It's very entertaining. They have comedy. She has a little mystery. It's not a earth-shaking murder. The ghosts are part 
of the ambiance of the hotel. People 